Uh, you're going towards Crescent Bay, and Gertrude is fla- is sailing the new Robert II. Uh, I was like, Robert II, Mark II, Electric Boogaloo. Yep, there you go. Okay, so <laughs> what is everyone doing? Uh, um, like, probably resting up. Yeah, uh, Hoden would probably be sleeping if they weren't doing anything already currently. Hoden must have throw uh, Kane back into a, a fucking barrel. <laughs> Kane, is, uh, Kane is sleeping with his goose. And Hoden only put Kane in the barrel for Kane's safety. He was inebriated. The barrel had nice head walls. There was less likely of a chance of him falling down, getting lost. Uh, so, yeah, so those guys are doing that. I don't know uh, what you want to be doing, Belnos. Gertrude is still up driving the ship. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do as I'm coming back to the session is bang Gertrude. Okay, uh, you're going to have to seduce Gertrude at least a little bit. She's, uh, she's not a complete whore. Did you go to that part? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You rise out from the lower decks. You literally have rose petals spread out in front of you. You're you're completely naked except for a loin cloth. There's like, there's like uh, a halo, like a l- halo of light around there, you. Yes, there, there is an aura of light around you, and at the same time, you have gathered yourself up with scented soaps, and you are holding candles in each hand, beckoning her to come forth. Which she does, and you have the best sex of your life next to the ship. <laughs> sailing the ship. My uh, that's is a very good question. Uh, we're gonna roll to find out what, what happens there. Uh, okay, Gertrude is is kind of just after uh, the, the the sex is over, which you know lasts about you know twenty minutes. She is driving the ship with one arm while holding Belnos like a woman uh, after they love. <laughs> Fuck it, might as well too. I'm banging the cleric. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to give me a sex roll. <laughs> Sixteen. Okay, yeah, you thoroughly bang out the cleric. Kane is still sleeping with the goose. He hasn't woken up despite the loud rhombus of sex throughout the ship. And uh, Rocco, I'm assuming you're just kind of sitting back and watching. Uh, Rocco would, if they're, like I said, if they're not doing anything, Rocco or Hoden would probably be asleep. You guys are all still sailing towards there because Gertrude still has a minute control of the boat. Um, and after a night of rhombus sex, you show up at the port of Crescent Bay. Uh, which is a fairly large seaport. Um, it does house some Kingdom Navy ships uh, that are docked on the far side. There's a lot of mid-range ships, a lot of uh, kind of uh, supply ships and runners, uh, a lot of kind of personal vessels, maybe for uh, some rich nobles that go down there to uh, sail across some of the southern islands. Um, and most of the shops in the town have to do with either selling fish uh, or good shops that uh, sell to the fishermen themselves okay. and to the navy as well. There is a weapons out. Okay, I was about to say there should be like a, a, a weaponsmith because yes, there is, there is a weaponsmith and there is there are several shipwrights. However, the weaponsmith only does navy ships. He does not do anything with uh, civilian ships unless he is paid a significant amount of money. Uh, this, and, is there is there like an armor? Yeah, you, there, there's a basic armorer and, uh, and uh, blacksmith, nothing special. Did we dock? Yes, you have successfully docked in the bay. Um, it is uh, almost sundown. I'm gonna roll. Uh, I'm gonna roll. To see if I can find. I'm gonna find the uh, the, the naval uh, the naval weapon smith. Okay. Yeah. Uh, roll for. Uh, uh, I got a twelve. Uh, okay, you're able to discern that it looks like there's some... You can tell where the forge is on the far side of the docks because you can see the smoke coming up from the center of it where all the metallurgy stuff is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you assume that that's probably where you're going to find the uh, weapons. All right, I'm going to go there. Okay, what are you guys going to do? All right, yeah, he probably woke up, and then uh, if they docked, he'd probably go off on the ship. In the first place, he'd probably try to head it. It's probably like an inn. Uh, okay, there is an inn fairly close to the docks. You can actually see it. Um, the name of the inn uh, is called the Kraken's Egg. <laughs> I'm just going to walk up to the kind of, yo, man, let me get one of these those Kraken eggs, bro. Egg. Are you going to check on the turtle dragon egg? No. Sure, uh, sure. You know what? Uh, let, me, let me check how the egg's doing. You notice that the egg uh, still is appearing to move around very seldomly, uh, and you can kind of, if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see through it. You can kind of see the little uh, turtle dragon on the inside who looks like he's pretty well formed. You can see a, a pretty good silhouette there. Uh, all right, so I'm going to put that back in my bag. Uh, yep. I'm guessing Hoden's going over to... Uh, yep, he's going to go over to the uh, end, so he's going to reach that first. And, and uh, Malric are going to go to the end, so Hoden, what are you going to do first? 
Uh, yeah, he's probably gonna go. Yo, man, let me let me get one of those those big cracking eggs, man. You guys got those? Like, why would? Oh, those. Yeah, we have omelets. It's made out of a cracking egg. Well, technically, it's just an overgrown chicken that we had a maid less a number of years ago. He just craps out giant eggs, and we just call them cracking eggs. But it, 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 they're actually pretty good. It doesn't have any kind of, you know, magic taste to it. Hoden's face just kind of, like, sinks in disappointment. Why would you call yourself the cracking egg? You don't because, have cracking eggs. Because, because it's a pun. Takes a hit of his joint. I don't get it. <laughs> Roll constitution. Fifteen. Uh, okay, you are you are not that big, but you're kind of... You can tell that like you look like you're a little bit tired and sleepy, and one of your eyes is droopy. But aside from that, you're you're pretty good. I want to question the guy why he don't sell cracking eggs, man. If he calls himself the cracking egg, he just explained that to Rocket. It's a pun. I'm I'm gonna roll a wisdom check to see if he actually gets it or not. Okay, roll wisdom. Oh, for the love of Jesus! You get a one. Yep. You understand that there's something there, but you don't know what it is. So you're just going to kind of play along and laugh. Guile, you have arrived at the uh, Naval Forge. However, there are guards outside around the building not letting anybody in. Unless they appear to be in some kind of a naval uniform. You're going to try and go in past the, the... A guard steps in front of you and says that you cannot enter. Why can I go in? What the hell are you talking about? This is for the military only. You ain't military for some random guy that walked up here. Get the hell out of here. How about I give you guys a gold piece each? We get more than that in three hours. Two. Maybe try ten a piece for me and Jimmy here. You don't talk. I'll go four, and I'm going to intimidate. All right, roll to intimidation. I rolled an 18. They agree to three because they are now terrified of you, and they allow you to pass. All right, so I'm going to go in. What do I see? All right, you go inside the Ford, uh, the Ford building. You see what looks like a massive furnace uh, that is constantly pumping out uh, molten metal, and it keeps going into the. It's almost like they have some kind of a conveyor belt system. You can see it looks like they have some kind of people turning like a wheel to power it, basically. Um, and it keeps going forward, and each one of these molds is shaped. The inside is shaped like a cannonball. Then you see them fall into a big tub of water, uh, and out shoots the cannonball from the base. So they just keep making cannonballs over and over again inside there. In addition, there are some that are hammering out cannons. Um, and there's also a few of them that appear to be uh, making swords and other forms of cutlery. Sure. Uh, how much for a, a cannon? Because they're, uh, they're the guys that are making the cannons? Yeah. Uh, so you go up to one of the gentlemen who appears to be making the cannon. He is uh, in the middle of smashing out um, what looks like a very large piece of metal with a rounded hammer. Uh, and he turns up to you. He's kind of covered in soot. He has like a uh, blacksmith's apron and stuff on and some gloves. You want to buy a cannon? Possibly two. You want to buy two cannons? Possibly. All right, look. I don't know how the hell you got in here. I don't really care how you got in here. That's not my business. I'm just here to make cannons. It's going to be about 50 gold each for each of the cannons. Then plus another 50 gold to have them smuggled onto your ship. So 150 total. No, 50 gold for each of them smuggled onto your ship. 200. 200. How about an emerald? Emerald? Mm -hmm. How much is that worth? 500 gold. Uh, do you know that that's what it's worth? I'm going to try and lie my ass off. Okay, so you're going to try and manipulate them. Mm, I'm going to roll um, perception to see if I find... Oh, you mean like a, yeah, like a harbor master. Harbor master, exactly. You're a harbor master, you're going to have to roll perception to try and see if you can find it. I roll the 17. Okay, you're able to spot what looks like a large tower-like structure that hovers over everything in the bay. Um, you're not sure. It may double as a lighthouse as well. It looks like it has kind of a beacon at the top of it, but it probably is where the harbor master is as well. How would I get in? Uh, there is a front door. Is it guarded? There are two guards on either side, but there it is also the harbor master. So as long as you have business in the port, you can enter and talk to them. It's just they have control over the port. There's civilian ships there too. I want to be there without any problems, so I'm going to try and disguise myself as an official. Okay. Um, how um, are you going to go about doing there. that? Probably going okay. to change clothes. Actually, I'm going to try and store this plan for something else because I don't think there is much here in this town. While Chem is doing his thing, I'm going to smoke a joint. Uh, okay, roll constitution, sir. Lady Luck, fuck you, I got a one. You take 
the biggest hit you can possibly take off of that joint. You literally smoked it down to ash in one entire rip, and yeah. you are immediately unconscious. You just you just fall in the bar and like since it's a bar, nobody really says anything because they just assume that you're drunk. Um, Raka does notice that you uh, you kind of just keeled over, and fell fell down though. Back up, start smoking him. <laughs> Cham, you were gonna roll to intimidate the. Uh, gonna persuade. Persuade. Sorry, it's still a yeah. critical roll. <laughs> Did you get a twenty? <laughs> you get a twenty. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a yes. <laughs> got a twenty. See, th- now he is so convinced that the emerald is worth so much money that he thinks you're a fucking idiot. And he thinks that it's actually worth a thousand gold. And he says yes. And he thinks he's getting a deal. Can I get three cannons? Yep. Uh, he's willing to throw in a small mortar, kind of what you have on the ba- on the uh, edges of the ship right now, the ones that are on the side. He All right, a, deal. Basically, basically a mini cannon. Deal. I'm going to ask him what about uh, ammunition. Uh, I can give you some small balls. Those shouldn't be too bad. They're only about fifty silver a piece. Uh, so those will go for that, and then the bigger ones are one gold a piece because they take a little while to actually cure correctly, and you need to get the right mix of iron in there, lad. I'll come back later for the ammunition. All right, when is a good time for us to sneak this on board your ship? I don't want to get caught by some deckhand who gets stab happy. That's How about what, before- also, what ship is yours, by the way? That's that's a better. Mine, mine. Uh, we it's a it's a commandeered orc pirate ship. It has that's, spikes. That's, that stands out. <laughs> yep, it stands out. It is the Robert II Mark II Electric Boogaloo. I'm not even going to ask about the name because I'm, I'm I'm getting a good price from you. But remind you, payment first. Uh, midnight will be the best time to come out. And I slide him one emerald. He seems very pleased. He nods to you in agreement and then goes back to all right, so uh, you successfully do that. Um, Raka, meanwhile, while you're at the bar sulking over the fact you're not going to be able to get Kraken lit, uh, Kraken eggs, uh, you feel the little device that you were given at the beginning of the campaign start to shake in your pocket. What the hell is that, man? I think there's an earthquake. And he just kind of, like, falls off the fucking chair. Um, everybody else in the bar just kind of stares at you when they assume that you're drunk. He realizes that it's just his pocket once his now there's pressure, so he just kind of, like, pulls it out. And looks right. at the device. Uh, as he's looking at it, it begins to glow red in his hand. And as you wave it around, it tends to blink faster when being faced towards a certain direction. He pokes Malrick again. Hey, man, wake up. If you want to wake up, you're going to need to roll to try and wake up. I got a 19. You wake up. Uh, you're still very groggy. You have very little equilibrium. And you're probably not going to remember most of the things that are said to you while you're in this state. I remember his you got to follow this little blinky device, man. Why do need to? Because there's money at the end. It just walks off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to start following the... Uh, yeah, the he's gonna, yeah, he's going to go in the direction. Whichever where it's blinking the fastest, we'll start following him. Um, and I'm going to follow Holden because I want the dinero. Okay. Uh, so you do follow him. So, uh, Raka, you follow the blinking light. It leads out the back door of the alleyway and down towards what looks like a pile of garbage. Next to the pile of garbage is standing a figure in a black cloak, which looks like Ishmael. All right, man, there better be money involved this time instead of glowing red marbles. I got a lead on the first weapon. It's called the Staff of Reality. You need to go to Sp- or Spellweaver Academy. His name sound very convenient. Spellweaver Academy? It seems like a... I think we try to hide some stuff. Like, sure, this is legit the staff, the, 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 the staff ain't there. But we need to go there to find out where the staff is. What I tracked down is I couldn't find out where the weapon was, but I know something in Spellweaver Academy that could help us. There's a crystal ball in the Archmage's quarters. Supposedly, if you can get to it and give it an offering of iron shavings, spread it over the top of it, it'll tell you anything you want to know. One thing that you want to know. So all we need to do is ask where is the staff of reality, and it will show us. Problem is, how do we get in Spellweaver Academy? Well, that's why we gotta go there and scout this shit out. What if one of us managed to disguise as one of the students, like, mingle in with the rest of the academy, and when the time is right, have make an opening for the rest? It's an idea, but you're gonna need somebody that can do magic. Fucking Kane! Yes, I was thinking Kane, exactly. You got a mage? 
Mm, I do know a mage, a gnome. He is with us. That's even better. He can fit into small places. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. That's another thing. We're going to need to be able to scout it out, and if we have somebody on the inside, they can find out a lot more for us than what I know now. Instead of just going straight in and have him go in and open the entrance, we have him scout out the place, case everything. You bring him there, I can get you the papers, you can get them forged, and then we can get him in there, we can get closer to getting the staff and get rich. Do they use a seal for the permits? There is a magical seal on them, as far as I know, but I don't, uh, I'm assuming that it can be broken somehow. All magical seals can be broken, man. Odin takes another light, like, hit off of his joint. Replicating a magical signature is the problem, Odin. It's not as easy as a written one. Everything's easy when you find the right person, and I bet you we got a little spellbinder guy that could replicate that magical seal. You do got a point. Maybe around the area around Spellweaver Academy we can find some more, you know, savory individuals who are more knowledgeable in the ways of magical items. Ishmael also marks Spellweaver Academy on your map. It is to the far northeast. You have a ways to go before you get there. It's basically on the other side of Calgon. Alright, Mallory. Before we head that way, though, we should probably gather some supplies. Um, Ishmael states that uh, he did bring some stuff along with him, just in case uh, Hoden would like to pick from his wares. Hey, man, what you got there? So he has some more of those hallucinogenic lollipops. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and grab a whole bunch of those. I think those are going to come in for you. He has two of of them on him. He is willing to sell you both. Each one of those is going to be worth uh, three gold. In addition to that, he also has uh, some white granulated powder that he says you can mix into (laughs) drink and keep you awake for long periods of time. He also has some a, a different kind of weed. It's not Green Dragon. It is instead called uh, Purple Salamander. How much does he have of that? Uh, he has roughly a pound with him. All right, so how much How much for the lot, man? All right, the powder itself, if you want the entire thing, he has an eight ball of it. If you want the entire thing uh, of that, it's going to be about 15 gold. If you want the entire pound of the uh, Purple Salamander, it's going to be probably about 20 gold. Although he is, he's willing to give you a discount on the purple salamander because you're buying all of it, he'll knock it down to 15. Hoden's going to go ahead and buy the lot. Okay, so you now have an eight ball of the uh, white powder, uh, which he refers to as some waking wake-up soda. Um, and then he also gives you the uh, purple salamander and both of the lollipop. What's up, Malrick? All right, bro. He holds the little, he holds the powder up. He's like, we got to go find something. Cut this. We give that to Guile for combat and see what happens. For Guile, man, we're gonna take the lolly. Alright, we're gonna dip it in water. Actually, no, we're gonna dip it in beer, man. And then we're gonna dab it all on this powdery shit. Dude, we do that. We send him over the door, into the room, close the door, and let everything happen. Alright, so he rolled an eight. I don't think that's gonna do shit. Okay, uh, so basically what you have made is what appears to be, it's a powder that's also kind of cakey, so it actually came out almost kind of like clay, and if you touch it, it gets you fucked up on hallucinogenics. Um, so you're going to have to make a constitution roll to make sure you don't get fucked up on hallucinogenics because you're not wearing gloves. Four. <laughs> okay, um... So the weed is not affecting you, but the hallucinogenics are. Uh, you think you're in Narnia. You don't know what Narnia is, but you think you're there. Come on, Malric, we gotta go find Edmund. I'm gonna guide Hoden by the shoulders, like stand behind him and move him so he doesn't bump into shit. Okay, he's he's not in any kind of state to resist, so he's just gonna he's just gonna walk. Yeah, he's gonna follow you. He thinks he thinks Malric's leading him to wherever Edmund, that traitor, is. All right, so you're fucked up on hallucinogenics, uh, and Ishmael has seen this entire thing and says that he will meet you uh, in right outside of Spellbinder or Spellweaver Academy uh, in the north, and uh, he will have what you need to uh, help you get in. He now leaves you in the alleyway. You are both incredibly fucked up. Cham, you have returned to the ship after your uh, deal with the weapons. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Gertrude, saying, like, I'm informing her, A, uh, I got a guy smuggling two cannons for us onto our ship. Uh, I just need I just need her to be here when he gets here. 
I'll be here. I'll be here. And I'll give her a gallon good, of ale. <laughs> good work, laddie. I'm going to get drunk. She rolled a 10, so she's not horribly, horribly drunk, but she is drunk. Then I'm going to go back out. I'm going to go find it like an uh, armory, like a, like a armor smith. Okay, uh, roll for perception. Uh, I rolled a 17. Okay, you're able to locate uh, the market district, which appears to have several armors in it, uh, or several blacksmiths at least. Uh, some of them that specialize in armor, some that specialize in weapons. Uh, I'm going to talk to the uh, the actual armor guy. Yeah, uh, you go up to uh, what looks like an armor. He is banging out a uh, what looks like a chest piece. He looks up as you beckon him. Hey, what can I do for you? Uh, yes, sir. I like to uh, buy a spiky helmet. A spiky helmet. Well, I can, I can make one. And, and I'm gonna like give him like a note, whatever, of my special item. Uh, so he states that he can make. Uh, he agrees. He says that he's going to have to custom make the helmet and your special uh, order as well. Um, he said it'll probably be ready by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so the iron helmet uh, is going to cost about 10 gold. And then the custom piece, because it's being made out of steel, is again going to be 10 gold. Uh, I want to persuade, see if I could get that price lowered. Okay, roll for persuasion. I got a 16. Uh, you are able to get the price of the helmet lowered back to five, and you are able to get the price of the special order um, lower that down to five as well. Ten gold. Let me reinforce study. So basically, it's the equivalency of your for the chest, and arms, and, uh, and helmet. Is being... How much will that be for a full suit of it? Thirty to thirty-five gold. He also nice. does. He also does have metal iron armor. But if you wanted like a full suit of that, it would be like one hundred and fifty to two hundred gold. I'm going to ask him how about an emerald. So the emeralds you have are cut emeralds. So I fucked that up a little bit. So those are actually worth a thousand gold apiece. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, so I can oh use them, I can, I can oh. use them actually with raw uncut emeralds. Uh, uh, but you still have the other eight. All right, uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with the uh, the studded uh, armor. You said thirty. Uh, yep. You pay uh, thirty, which is the full price. So you give him thirty gold, and he gives you the set of armor. 